Chapter 6. The Tracking Network. Thirty-six million miles separated the Earth from Venus at encounter. Communicating with Mariner 2, and tracking it out to this distance and beyond, represented a tremendous extension of man's ability to probe into planetary space. The problem involved, one, the establishment of the spacecraft's velocity and position relative to the Earth, Venus, and the Sun with high precision. Two, the transmission of commands to activate spacecraft maneuvers. Three, the reception of readable spacecraft engineering and scientific data from the far-ranging Mariner. The tracking network had to contend with many radio noise sources. The noise from the solar system and from the electrogalactic origins noise originating from the Earth and its atmosphere, and the inherent interference originating in the receiving equipment. These problems were solved by using advanced high-gain antennas and ultra-stable, extremely sensitive receiving equipment. Deep Space Instrumentation Facility The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has constructed a network of deep space tracking stations for lunar and planetary exploration missions. In order to provide continuous 24-hour coverage, three stations were built, approximately 120 degrees of longitude apart around the world. At Goldstone, in the California desert, near Johannesburg in South Africa, and at Woomera, in the south-central Australian desert. These stations are the basic elements of the Deep Space Instrumentation Facility, DSIF. In addition, a mobile tracking station installed in vans is used near the point of interjection of a spacecraft into the Earth escape trajectory to assist the permanent stations in finding the spacecraft and to acquire tracking data. The control point for the DSIF net is located at JPL in Pasadena, California. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory has the responsibility for the technical direction of the entire DSIF net and operates the Goldstone facilities with assistance from the Bendix Corporation as a subcontractor. The overseas stations are staffed and operated by agencies of the Republic of South Africa and the Commonwealth of Australia. The DSIF net tracks the position and velocity of US deep space probes, issues commands to direct spacecraft in flight, receives engineering and scientific data from the probes, and automatically relays the data to JPL in Pasadena, where it is processed by computers and interpreted. In the tracking operation, a signal is transmitted to the spacecraft, where it is received and processed in a transponder, which then sends the signal back to the Earth. The change in frequency, known as the Doppler effect involved in this operation, enables engineers to determine the velocity at which the spacecraft is moving. Deep Space Instrumentation Facility Stations DSIF-1 Mobile Tracking Station is located on the near point of interjection of the spacecraft into the Earth escape trajectory. The equipment is a 10-foot antenna, 25W890MC transmitter. Its functions, fast tracking for acquisition of spacecraft. Goldstone, the pioneer site, DSIF-2. This is in California. Its equipment is an 85-foot polar mount antenna, Cassegrain feed, maser and parametric amplifier. Its functions are reception of telemetry tracking spacecraft. EchoSight DSIF-3. This also is in California. Equipment is an 85-foot polar mount antenna, parametric amplifier, 10KW-890MC transmitter. Its functions are transmission of commands, tracking spacecraft, standby and reception. The Venus site in California. The equipment is an 85-foot radar-type antenna. Its functions are advanced radar astronomy and communications research. DSIF-4 is in Woomera, Australia. It has an 85-foot polar mount antenna and a parametric amplifier. Its function is reception of telemetry tracking spacecraft. DSIF-5 is in Johannesburg, South Africa. Its equipment is an 85-foot polar mount antenna, parametric amplifier, a 10KW-890MC transmitter. Its functions are reception of telemetry tracking and spacecraft, transmission of commands.
The stations are equipped with receiving and tracking instruments, so sensitive that engineers estimate that they can detect radio frequency energy equivalent to that radiated by a one watt light bulb at a distance of approximately 75 to 80 million miles. Such energy received at the antenna would measure about 0.000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
lowers the noise picked up by the antenna by reducing interference from the back of the antenna and permits more convenient location of components. The receiving system at Pioneer Site is also equipped with a low noise extremely sensitive installation combining a parametric amplifier and a maser. The parametric amplifier is a device that is pumped or excited by microwave energy in such a way that when an incoming signal is at its maximum, the effect is such that the pumped-in energy augments the original strength of the incoming signal. At the same time, the parametric amplifier reduces the receiving system's own electronic noise to such a point that the spacecraft can be tracked twice as far as before. The maser uses a synthetic ruby mixed with chromium and is maintained at a temperature of liquid helium, about 4.7 degrees Kelvin, or negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, just above absolute zero, and when pumped with a microwave field, the molecular energy levels of the Mazar material are redistributed so as to again improve the signal amplification while lowering the system noise. The Mazar doubles the tracking capability of the system with a parametric amplifier and quadruples the capability of the receiver alone. The antenna output at Pioneer is a wideband telemetering channel. In addition, the antenna can be aimed automatically, using its own error signals. At both the Pioneer and Echo sites at Goldstone, however, the antenna is pointed by a punched tape prepared by a special purpose computer at JPL and transmitted to Goldstone by teletype. Pioneer site has a highly sensitive receiver designed to receive a continuous wave signal in a narrow frequency band in the 960 megacycle range. The site has equipment for recording tracking data for use by computers in determining accurate spacecraft position and velocity. The instrumentation equipment also includes electronic signal processing devices, magnetic tape recorders, oscillographs, and other supplementary receiving equipment. The telemetered data can be computed, recovered from a signal shared by several measurements on a time basis, encoded, and transmitted by teletype in real time as received from the spacecraft to JPL. Echo Site is the primary installation in the Goldstone complex and has antenna and instrumentation facilities identical to those at Pioneer, except that there is no maser amplifier and a simple feed system is used instead of the Cassegrain. However, Echo was used as a transmitting facility and only as a standby receiving station during the Mariner mission. Echo has a 10 kilowatt 890 megacycle transmitter, which was utilized for sending commands to the Mariner spacecraft. In addition, the site has an atomic clock, frequency standard, based on the atomic vibrations of rubidium, which permits high precision measurements of the radial velocity of the spacecraft. A unit in the Echo system provides for readback and confirmation by the spacecraft of commands transmitted to it. In a sense, the spacecraft acknowledges receipt of the commands before executing them. Walter E. Larkin manages the Goldstone Station for JPL. The Woomera Station The Woomera Australia Station, DSIF-4, managed by William Metier for the Australian Department of Supply, has essentially the same antenna and tracking capabilities as Goldstone Echo Site but it has no provisions for commanding the spacecraft. A small transmitter is used for tracking purposes only. The station is staffed and operated by the Australian Department of Supply. Woomera, like Johannesburg, is capable of receiving tracking, position and velocity, data and telemetered information for real-time transmission by radio teletype to JPL. The Johannesburg Station DSIF-5 is located just outside Johannesburg in the Republic of South Africa. This station is staffed by the National Institute of Telecommunications Research, NITR, of the South African Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and managed by Douglas Hogg. The antenna and receiving equipment are identical to the Goldstone Echo Site installation, except for minor details. The station has both transmitting and receiving capability and can send commands to the spacecraft. Recorded tracking and telemetered data are transmitted in real time to JPL by radio teletype. Mobile Tracking Station 
The Mobile Tracking Station, DSIF-1, is a movable installation designed for emplacement near the point of injection of a space probe to assist the permanent stations in early acquisition of the spacecraft. This station is necessary because at this point the spacecraft is relatively low in altitude and consequently appears to move very fast across the sky. The mobile tracking station has a fast tracking antenna for use under these conditions. DSIF-1 was located near South African Station for Mariner 2. It has a 10-foot parabolic antenna capable of tracking at a 10 degree per second rate. A 25-watt, 890-megacycle transmitter is used for obtaining tracking information. A diplexer permits simultaneous transmission and reception on the same antenna without interference. The equipment is installed in mobile vans so that the station can be operated in remote areas. The antenna is enclosed in a plastic dome and is mounted on a modified radar pedestal. The ray dome is inflatable with air and protects the antenna from wind and weather conditions. These stations of the DSIF tracked Mariner 2 in flight and sent commands to the spacecraft for the execution of manoeuvres. The telemetry data received from the spacecraft during the 129 days of its mission were recorded and transmitted to JPL, where the information was processed and reduced by the computers of the Space Flight Operations Complex.